Massive win for the Texans, but a lot of the chatter this morning around this country is about America's team playing it safe, not going for it on fourth and one in overtime. Jason Garrett, what say you? Yeah, it was a, it was a long uh, one. You know, we, we had it. We had a third and two, and we didn't make much on it. And uh, we just felt like at that point in the game, the way our defense was playing, uh, the idea was to pin him down there. Uh, Chris did a great job with the punt. They got the ball on the 10-yard line, and hopefully you make a stop and you win the game, coming back the other way uh, with a game-winning field goal. All right, you heard the explanation. What do you gentlemen here at the table, you guys had a lot to say about this before the show, what do you think about the Cowboys not going for it on fourth down? I'm in the car on the way in this morning, okay? <laughs> I have, this, I have this driver, his name's Fred. I'm all half asleep, I'm lying there. Fred goes, why don't you go for it? And I go, what the hell, are you talking about my personal life? What are you talking about, Fred? <laughs> Ezekiel Elliott, son, he's screaming at me. In the back, he's screaming at me. People are furious about this because we're in an era of boldness and going for it, and you are in the Texans territory. You have poured millions of dollars into your offensive line. You have a 235-pound quarterback if you want to sneak it. You have Ezekiel Elliott if you want to run it. Jason Garrett elects the punt. They never get the ball back. I know it's Monday morning. I'm going to play quarterback. I think it was a terrible decision. I think it was the safest decision he could have possibly made. What was the plan? We're going to punt it. We're going to stop him. We're going to get it again. Isn't everything you want as a coach one opportunity to make one yard and effectively win the game? Right. We saw it yesterday. You know what the play should have looked like when the Cowboys had fourth and one with the game? It should have looked like this. Show everyone in Cowboys Nation what it looked like. That's the Rams. That is at the end of the game electing to go with a quarterback sneak. And look at Jared. Look how fired up. That should have been Dak Prescott. I know this and that, and Monday morning you can second guess. I thought it was a really, really bad call and a huge moment. I hated it, too. And Garrett's comments afterwards were that it was like a long one yard. It almost oh. feels like a parody comment. And, and I know everyone's going to pick on them, but that's where seasons are won. That's where locker rooms are won. And we can't applaud McVay and Gall, and we can't applaud right. Frank Reich for missing. Like, this is what the NFL is right now in 2018. Right. You've got to live boldly because your teams follow their coaches. I didn't like it, but I know that, you know, I didn't coach football. So, yeah. uh, to me, though, that energy that the Rams showed after that play, we're going to get to that one. Win the game. That's what you need. And right now, the Cowboys players are like, well, he didn't trust our offensive line, our running back, or our quarterback, and we don't have a receiver. So, I guess there's the season. We're there's seeing a, that all over the league. Yeah, there's a bit of a contradiction in me because, you know, when Frank Reich went for it, I thought to myself, you know, just play it safe. You know, if you sit there and punt the ball, it ends up with a tie. I'm, I'm better with that than a, a loss. And then yesterday, I'm saying – you know what? Go for it. I'm looking at the, the common theme around the league. Teams have been more aggressive in those later downs, fourth downs, than any other season I've ever seen. Even yesterday, I'm watching teams getting to that point where they're saying, should we send the punt team out there or should we go for it? So in agreement with you guys, I'm going to say yes. When you look at the situation that the Cowboys were in, you have nothing to lose. Go ahead and go for it. So my tune has actually changed when you guys gave me a hard time at this table mm -hmm. and said, Nate, why not? If you're mm -hmm. the coach, why not go for it? So I have to backtrack and say, you know what? I should have said, yes, you're right. Just like yesterday, why not go for it if you're the Cowboys? You guys all three agree with it, but uh, I agree, and I think you guys will too, that sort of took away from the Texans getting a win mm -hmm. here. So we got to give them a little bit of credit, Nate. No the NFL uh, Twitter account, they churn out a ton of content all the time, and they always pin a tweet. A pin a tweet that they know is going to go viral. Mm -hmm. The pin tweet from Sunday Night Football yeah. on the NFL account is this thing that we saw from DeAndre Hopkins. The, the pin. What was it? Two spin moves? He did like a Double triple spin. Lutz, triple sow cow? Like, I don't even know what this thing was. Awesome. I do know that this was less than four minutes left in overtime. He fumbled the ball, atoned for it, did this incredible move that should be on angry rungs because he's angry about that fumble that he caused right. earlier. He wants to seal the deal. He goes on and celebrates with his mom. I love this because DeAndre came on our show and I asked him how he feels about sometimes not being mentioned as one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver. The fact that he made up for it, the fact that he did it uh, in prime time, under the bright lights, winning it for his team, keeping them in it. I loved seeing it. Yeah, it was great. X is an old standpoint, just a crossing route. He catches it in traffic, and then he heads upfield, not even looking at the DBs, just more like the obstacle of trying to score a touchdown mm -hmm. and holding the ball like it was a baby he wasn't going to let go. <laughs> Shout out to DeAndre Hopkins. Incredible play. The NFL's leading receiver, DeAndre Hopkins. All right, more right. highlights. for. And here is Pat Shermer in OBJ on the loss. Well, I'm going to answer all the drama questions right now. And I'm going to go back to what I said, all right? I addressed it with Odell. I addressed it with our team. I publicly declared that I didn't agree with his comments. And I asked anybody that was interested, if they wanted clarification, go to Odell, because he's a big man. Now, I'm not going to give the public a pound of flesh on this. 
right? That would make me small, not strong. And these are the kind of things, in my opinion, when you have the locker room that we have, that will help galvanize them. Because the locker room took care of it. And that's all I'm saying on it. Finito. Done. I don't regret anything that I said. If it, if it took that for us to come together as a team like we did today, I, I could take that every single time. Um, you know, I kind of spoke to the team just to relay the message that it, sometimes stuff comes off the wrong way. You know, words can be portrayed in, in any kind of light. And um, like I said, the conversations between us, but the way that we responded as a team to, to what was said, um, I felt like it would have been too easy after what was said and then after what I said to them to come in here and fight and, and, and have heart, energy, all that stuff, grit, whatever words you want to use for that, we had it today and we came up short. But I'm proud of this team and, and uh, this is the team that we're going to be for the rest of the season. All right, let's talk to Rap Sheet now. Ian Rappaport joining us, our NFL Network insider. You just heard Pat Shermer say, finito, done, talking about Odell Beckham's comments. Is this really the case? Is it closed? Uh, in New York, no. No chance. But it doesn't even have to be. And honestly, for the Giants, there was a lot more going on here besides just Odell Beckham's comments. But listen to Pat Shermer. What he was essentially was the anti-Ben McAdoo. He did not entertain questions on this. He didn't kind of go back and forth with the press. He simply made a very strong statement. He turned the issue over to his locker room, and he kind of moved on. And, and this is something, Kay, that Shermer has been doing ever since he arrived in New York. He has made it clear to media members, to his team, that he simply does not have time for all this sort of extra stuff. And he made a big point of saying his focus, unlike when he was a head coach in Cleveland, his focus is going to be strictly on football football related questions then there's the matter of Odell's comments and yeah the team's performance actually held up pretty well against his comments they did fight they did take a couple deep shots perhaps maybe in a weird way that was what they needed but time will tell as far as how the team actually responds it's pretty clear the comments rubbed a lot of people especially in that locker room the wrong way but this was also a team that was going in the wrong way so their performance on the field is going to determine what their response was like and whether or not Beckham did something to hurt his team or actually, as Shermer said, galvanized the locker room, got them going in the right direction and maybe woke up some people. Shermer taking a positive spin on it and doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Odell not regretting any of those comments made. Thank you so much, Ian Rappaport. We'll talk to you throughout the show and throughout the day here on NFL Network. Back here at the breakfast table, Nate. Yeah. Do you think that what he said is helpful to the team. Well, it's hard to break it down and say what he said because there are so many things said. I mean, the interview had Lil Wayne in it, who just dropped an album, so I'm pretty sure it was more than just sports um, that was talked about with that sit down. I will say this, uh, you have to kind of compartmentalize it. Pat Shermer saying this galvanized the locker room or will galvanize the locker room. I believe when he's talking about heart and passion and grit, yeah, that stuff does galvanize the locker room. If anybody has a problem with Odell saying that, then you got to have a problem with uh, Aaron Rodgers saying it or Tom Brady or any other superstar that gets paid a ton of money. Uh, it's like Peter Parker's uncle who said with great responsibility mm -hmm. um, it comes, uh, great powers come great responsibility. Uncle ben. With great money comes great leadership. And I think Odell for the first time has taken that role. The one thing I don't agree with is uh, when Josina asked him about Eli and he says, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, he can't get out the pocket and, you know, we'll see what happens. Does he have a few more throws in him? Mm -hmm. We'll see. That's him being honest because we'd all be lying and contradicting ourselves if we said that we didn't say that at one point this season mm -hmm. that Eli can't move and he's, and, he's, and, he's, and he's not getting the ball downfield. He missed Odell on 10 passes going into this game. But I would say to Odell, just keep that in-house. Like, answer the question generically. Hit him with a cliche. You know, that's my guy. I ride with him. He's a legend. He's going to the Hall of Fame. And then you get into the locker room and say, Eli, man, I need you to give me the rock. We're having problems. So that's the only thing that I would say I have a problem with the interview. Everything else, I'm good with. I love the honesty. Every other player can be honest. When Odell does it, it's like, oh, here he goes again being crazy Odell. No, he's just being honest Odell. The fact that these guys fell short of expectations going into this game, the fact that they haven't scored 30 points since 2015, the fact that the Giants – quite frankly, for lack of better words, look trash up to this point. That's what galvanized this team, not the words of all So Odell. did he help? <sighs> no, I don't think guys read the article and said, hey, this is going to help us win this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look at it this way. The first four weeks of the season, we were talking about the Chiefs, talking about the Rams, talking about these exciting rookie quarterbacks. 
forget losses and wins and catches. Odell Beckham hates being irrelevant. And he was irrelevant the first month of the season. He had nothing to do with the season. And for him to sit down with Josina Anderson and Lil Wayne and take down his team, to me, he's just trying to be relevant. And he's relevant again. Here we are. You're one and four. We're talking about you, Odell. Mm. Listen, we, we take shots at Odell in the media. No teammate ever does it. The teammates love him. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Odell speaks out and then addresses the team right before the game, and all of a sudden they're scoring, they're fun, they're almost... They lost in a 63-yard field goal, basically. They won that game. Yeah. You can say finito. How about some puntos and el partido? Yeah. All right, el hermanito Eli so was it, good. It helped? I think it did. Yes, I do. I think, I, I think he lit a fire. I think he changed the energy, changed the mojo. All of a sudden the team looked completely different. I can't see it as a coincidence. Aaron Rodgers does it all the time. Yeah. He talks to the media so he can talk to his team. Mm. You, see, you do point that out when it happens. We'll see uh, what you guys think out there. We'd love to hear from you, Giants fans. No, not a coincidence. 33 to 31 with a clutch, really like a walk-off quarterback sneak on a fourth down. Great win for the Rams. Gut check style. It was, and it's not uh, by, you know, it was by design, really, that we put the Rams and the Chiefs highlights together in one segment because those are your two undefeated squads in the NFL. Shrags, I'm turning it to you to yeah. talk about the Rams here. McVay's decision-making, even in this game, beyond it, what do you got for Yeah, us? I spoke with Sean last night after the game, and he was thoroughly exhausted. It was as if he had just run a marathon, mm -hmm. and he was you know, completely exhausted. And he kept on stressing the love and faith for his guys. And you see that play. They go out for the punting the punt play, and Hecker comes out. They call timeout, and in that time, he looked at Whitworth, he looked at Saffold, he looked at Goff, he saw forlorn faces, he said, let's go. And he said, his message to me was, I can't preach aggressive, I can't pe preach high energy, I can't preach the stuff that I've been preaching if, my, if I don't back it up myself. So this one, this is all about the players, his love for the players, his trust for his players, but also for the theme of the season. We're going to be aggressive, we are going to be energetic, and we're going to go for it, we are going to swing, and if we miss, we miss, but we are going to trust our players. This guy loves those guys, mm -hmm. and they love playing for him. A lot of weird stuff with coaches and players around the league. You will not find a single Los Angeles Rams player who mm -hmm. has a bad thing to say about their coach because he mm -hmm. believes in them. Yeah, I don't want to over-dramatize the moment, but it, it reminded me of the Philly special. When they, they have that moment when it, it's, it's Nick Foles, and you're looking at Peterson, look at each other, and they trust. say, all right, are we going to do this? And that's what it was like on the yeah, sideline. McVeigh and Goff and them looking at each other saying, They made a statue out of it. You know what? Forget <laughs> this. And that's exactly what they should do. But I, I feel like it's a combination of what Sean McVeigh is doing. Um, we can wash away the narrative that he's just this young kid that's really clever. It's gadgets. Yeah, of course. But it's guts. Like, how do you, how do you battle gadgets and guts? You can't. And, and they're doing it well this season. All right, we'll be back after this on Good Morning Football. And shout out to my Vikings. They win 23 to 21 over the Eagles. Let's hear from both QBs, Cousins and Wentz. Uh, it's great to win on the road in the NFL. It's always a satisfying feeling because you know how hard it is, how challenging it is to come into an environment like this uh, against a really good football team. Took. You know, all, all, all the guys that stepped out there today uh, got a lot of contributions. I was proud of the offensive line to only allow one sack with uh, as many attempts as we had and uh, with the pass rush that they have to go on the road with Riley Reef then having to go out and moving Rashad over to left tackle, Brian, a rookie, stepping in at right tackle. I thought it was very impressive by them to only give up one sack and play the game that they played. We got to take a real hard look in the mirror. Um, little mistakes like that, and kind of the same thing I uh, really echoed last week after the game. Um, these little mistakes that sometimes can go overlooked are just killing us. And we're playing like we're a young uh, rookie team and we're not. And so we got to really be hard on ourselves and, and learn from these mistakes and uh, turn it around fast. Yeah. Gentlemen, Minnesota had to have just circled this yeah. game on the calendar, highlighted it, all of that when the schedule was released. What is the most impressive thing about them getting revenge in the, from the NFC Championship game? The most impressive thing is Kirk Cousins. He made some throws in this game, and he's been doing it all season. He's playing at such an efficient level. I remember in the offseason, I said, out of the three quarterbacks that moved around, the top names, Alex Smith, Case Keenum, and Kirk Cousins, one of these guys is going to rise to the occasion, one of these guys not so much. And I remember I was making the case for Case all summer. Adam, I mean, not Adam, Adam uh, Kirk Cousins is separating himself right now. Mm -hmm. He is separating himself by the way he's playing, by the way he's controlling this offense. And the throws, they are just zipping through the air and with complete accuracy. The way that he can hit receivers on the run and put them in position to make plays after they catch the ball is so impressive. And he's doing it all the while, taking shots just like this. So I'll say Kirk Cousins. I, I'm just going to double down on it. It's such an important game for Cousins because 
from a fan's perspective, it's just the direct side-by-side -side comparison. It's like he took them on the same date to the same restaurant that Case Keenum did last year. Case Keenum was a disaster. It was a terrible night for them. So Cousins comes in this house of horrors and Fletcher Cox and the world champs are going to get right. He was so good and so efficient. And all this thing, Case Keenum had a special thing with Adam Thielen. No, Kirk Cousins has a mm. special thing with everybody. He's a fantastic quarterback right now. It's exciting as hell. The offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings is John Filippo. He was okay. the quarterback's coach in Philadelphia yeah. last year. They came in there and that team was supposed to be defense first, cousins do the job. But when you get there and, you know, it's a horrible story. Tony Sperano passes away two days before the start yep. of training camp. He's their run game coordinator. They lose their starting guard in Joe Berger. They lose their other starting guard in Nick Easton. Mm. He's got two Ferraris on the outside yeah. in Thielen and Diggs. They completely scrapped what they were supposed to be identity-wise yeah. and said, let's just roll with Cousins and these two wide receivers. When you've got two Ferraris out there, you let them fly. The and, I, and, up, and I'll tell you what, Mario Andretti, that's mm. Kirk Cousins right now. <laughs> hey. He's rolling in them because they've got the best passing it's offense true. in the league You're right. that no one's talking about. I love their offense, and I love what Filippo. And as doing. a quarterback and as a team, I look at it, you know, I'm from Chicago. I'm looking at the NFC North from a Bears perspective, sole possession of the NFC North for two straight weeks. Now they have a bye, of course. I'm more scared of Kirk Cousins and company than I am of Aaron Rodgers right now. With it's crazy. The, with the weaponry, with the fact, even even without a run game in Minnesota, yeah. they're still getting it done with, that, with yeah. the holes on defense that they're not going to keep playing terribly there's too much talent on that defense yeah. to keep playing there and then you look at it also from a Broncos perspective I'm looking at it from their fan perspective they could have maybe had Kirk mm. Cousins maybe not we don't really not really know but right. the fact that they've got Case Keenum who's not performing as expected at all down there for the Broncos you've got to be like Tough you could have had that right. all right more highlights for you right now we end the same season they are two and three 31 to 23. They're all right you're taking a look now at the list of teams who have beaten Rodgers and Tom Brady the same year, uh, you know, and that's not very many teams since then. All of those squads, though, went on to make the playoffs except for the Bills. So after seeing how the Packers played yesterday, guys, watching that whole game, letting it soak in against your former team, do you feel like Aaron Rodgers can still lead this team to the playoffs? No, I've been doubting the, uh, the Packers since the season started. You know, a lot of it came with... Uh, the balance of that offense um, when it comes to a running game complementing a passing game and then as soon as I seen Aaron Rodgers get banged up I've been betting against them pretty much every game and you know people think it's just because I got my butt kicked by the Packers okay. during my career and I hate Aaron Rodgers and I hate the offense no I just feel like there's some issues and it starts with protecting Aaron Rodgers it starts with Aaron Rodgers mobility and it starts with them not having the balance that I see fit for that offense to be as scary as it once was so for me no to answer your question Kay, I, I don't believe that Aaron Rodgers is as scary as we once thought and because him doing it alone 60 70 percent on one leg it's not going to cut it yeah. in a competitive nfc north they didn't they didn't punt yesterday they didn't they moved the ball up and down the field they had three touchdowns four missed field goals two fumbles like to me aaron Rodgers has 10 touchdowns this season one interception and in the last eight years where he's been a starter for the green bay packers they've gone to the playoffs so of course they could still make the playoffs and i still think they will i this is freak stuff. This is freak stuff. Right. Mason Crosby doesn't miss field goal. Like, it happens. They got that out of their system. The move on. I can't give up on Aaron Rodgers just yet. It's, it's not even mid-October. So I'm going to say I think they still absolutely can get it done. Let's look at it. He, he beat the Bears despite being knocked out of the game. Yes. He tied the Vikings on one leg, another huge missed kick in that game. And then he has this biblical meltdown by his kicker, five kicks in one game where he, he would have been with the, the Lions. Twice. Yeah, I'm not saying it's, it, he played perfect, but in terms of are they involved? Yeah, of course they are. Guys, I looked at you. You want a name? Rolf Benerski. Please, who's you know Rolf? Who, Rolf, like the, the puppet, the, the piano player. Go on. Rolf Benerski is the last guy to miss four field goals and an extra point in the same game. 1980 Chargers. Ooh. Rolf Benerski. That, we're at the Rolf Benerski yeah. point of the season. That's what made, he went full Benerski. That's the only <laughs> reason they were that blown out by it. So yes, Kay, I think that Packers still have a say in this. What a great name. Did Rolf Benerski. Did they question yes. Dan Fouts after no. that game? Yes, no. I do. Of course, no. Benerski. I will not do any sort of heavy lifting on the show saying that Aaron Rodgers will not or cannot or it, it's hopeless for them to make it but I will give credit to their defense who I feel like we're sleeping on just a little bit don't look now this is like one of the best defenses in the league this is top 10 stuff that they're doing bringing it week in week out let's not forget that Aaron Rodgers last time he had a top five defense mm. went on and won the Super Bowl so the way that they've been performing you know Rodgers he'll settle in he'll make it happen somehow it is the defense that's been really impressing me so Shout far this Buffalo. season uh so yeah well yeah that's Shout true. Out to the so that. let's bring in uh Will Selva now he is out in the newsroom in Los Angeles as always bringing us the goods hey Will
Absolutely. What's going on there, Kay? It is not a happy Monday for the 49ers, especially running back Matt Breida, who was battling a shoulder injury heading into the game against the Cardinals yesterday. But this wasn't the one that forced him out of the loss to Arizona. Breida sustaining in the quarterback, Scott Wynn. So let's include Baker Mayfield in this guy's Darnold Rosen oh, and Alan. We just saw those highlights. Peter, who impressed you the most? Quick? Baker Mayfield. The, the Browns do not beat the Ravens. That's just historically. They don't get it done. They found a way. Mayfield wins again. I don't know what it is. He just makes it work. Work. I'll go with Josh Allen had 82 yards passing 82 <laughs> yards passing and he impressed me the most because Baker's so cool and he's dripping with swag and Josh Rosen's so sophisticated and interesting Josh Allen's in front of his home fans saying get up get up in the first quarter in the fourth quarter I love his it factor yeah. all right I'm going uh, Sam Darnold going up against the Broncos uh, Sam Darnold playing against yeah. Chubb and Von mm -hmm. Miller and that, that pass rush and those DBs he was going right over the top of them I mean, Robbie Anderson had himself a day hit him beautifully on two passes but also I say a crow will Leaning on the running game and knowing where your, your bread is butter. Shout oh, out man. to Sam Darnold. Rosen was under pressure all day. That offensive line, the run game could not get going, and he somehow gritted out a win. That incredible pass to Christian Kirk yeah. that you're talking about. They never gave the lead back, and the Cards got their first win of the season. This is Good Morning Football. We're yep. talking rookies. We're talking vets. We're talking to that vibe. But before that, some questions about their offense. The Lions are sitting at the bottom, but they've had some impressive showings Lions as well, and, and that is not the yeah, record. Yeah. Two and three is. Yeah. And those wins over Rodgers, over Brady, some big ones. This division's pretty interesting. Yeah. So let's talk playoffs. If they started tomorrow, who, Kyle, do you not want to face? Who do you least want to play? I'm still going to go with the Packers because they beat the Bears. Okay. And I believe they have the best quarterback. And there's no possible way they could ever have a kicking game like that again. That, that I, I can't believe what I saw yesterday. I, I believe that it happened with Mason Crosby, but... I would think if you were going to see that night, it would be a college game to be some poor freshman with Vern Lundquist mm -hmm. on the call, and they would change his Wikipedia and everything. This is a veteran who's been around for years. He was indoor. Guys, he tried everything. He changed his shoes in the middle of the game. Did he? Everything. He said, I, I don't know what to do. After the fourth missed kick, he just looks at his hold. He's like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. It was incredible to watch someone have the most embarrassing moment of their life played out on television. Yeah. Painful. Painful. I was trying to relate to him. Quick story. So Tom, I went on a first date, okay? And I sit, sit the girl down, and we have pizza, and we have these tall beers and everything, and I cheers, and I spill the beer all over the pizza, all over her pants, everything was terrible. She was really cool, she rolled with it. We get another pizza, another round of beers. I did the exact same thing. I spilled another beer and another pizza. It got on her purse. She's gonna, I think we should go. Anyone surprised That was Mason story? Crosby's no. day yesterday. The two beers on two pizzas and the purse, and he's gonna recover from it. I didn't, but that was how terrible that is, and that's why my answer would be the Packers. Self-sabotage right there. Terrible. She's a nice girl, too. Publicist. They all are out there. <laughs> Brett stink that bad? What do you mean? Terrible. <laughs> all right. Um, for me, I'm looking at the Chicago Bears, and it's because of their outing last week. For the first time, I saw Matt Nagy in that offense and the pieces that they brought to this team start to take shape, and that's what we expected. We were looking for this team to be a little bit different than last year. Mitchell Trubisky in that running game, we knew that was there, but then mm -hmm. the passing game, the tight ends and wide receivers started to make plays. Here's a little story. So my best friend Darnell, I talk about him all the time. <laughs> Self-admitted, he says he can't dress. So when we would go out all the time, he's like, man, I just, I sabotage myself with my outfits. <laughs> and then one day he figured it out. And he started kind of narrowing up the pants. Okay. And he got the tighter shirts. Mm -hmm. And he lost a little weight, started working out. And we went out and he was cleaning up. Yeah! At the number, my man was on fire. <laughs> but I didn't believe it. I was like, listen, Darnell. if you yes. can come back and do that again, then I'll be a believer in your new system. Darnell got with the public In this new you. That's the Bears. I want to see you do it again. All right. If you have that offense play like that, fantastic. We know what Khalil Mack is going to do on the other side. I love so I'm it. I'm going to go Vikings here. I think Kirk Cousins is playing out of his mind. He's like, hey, Mahomes and Goff, here's my MVP bid. I have mm. two interceptions. I'm second in the league in passing yards. And the defense came to play. A brilliant play when they needed it by Linval Joseph, which we all saw. They sacked Wentz three times, shut down the run game. Uh, and the defense sort of seems to be figuring it out at the right time, keeping the Eagles in check. Listen, the last place I want to go, and this is per Schrager, and per Nate Burleson is up to Minnesota to play in the playoffs with that crowd. You're right. Two quick thoughts from me. The Lions do deserve some respect for this win. They've now beaten Brady and the Pack. The Lions could be one of these teams that if they beat the Niners in a game they should have had, they beat Dallas in a game they should have had, the Lions could be like 4-1. and one. So they're on the cusp. My second thought is 
first date with a young lady and you take her to pizza and beer? Yeah, what would you, what do you want? A pheasant under glass? Or yeah, no, yeah, you're taking her to, we're taking a tavern on the green, we're taking her to a show. <laughs> oh, no, Joel on in Santa Monica, it's a great place, Peter. It's a, a lot of first dates ended up in a fifth date. Did you, so, did, yes. Did yes. you pick her up or you tell her to take an Uber? What was the, no, we met. She didn't yeah. want to be picked up. So what was it like? <laughs> you guys go, go Dutch or did you take care of the bill? Oh, I took care of the bill. Pizza, beer, two I had to pizzas. pay for a purse, too. Two pizzas. Two pizzas, two beers. A you're looking at the teams that only have one win of these. One win squads. Which one do you feel like shouldn't be on the list? Maybe they won't be on the list after a couple of weeks. Who's going to turn it around, Nate? The one win teams. What was that list again? It, it popped up and left me really fast. There's a, a, a bunch of them. Uh, okay, let me see that list again because I have to give this some thought. Let's um, do it. For me, I'm looking at the Falcons. Um, Are you really? Yeah, I, I, I am. <laughs> Just do a dart at the hey, screen. Hey, listen, it was 5 a.m. <laughs> when I made my selection, all right? But, and listen, I, I'm looking at the Falcons because I know when you're watching the Falcons this year, you're saying Atlanta can't stop anybody. They're giving up so many points. But when they're playing well and they're playing at a high level, that doesn't concern me because their offense is good when they're playing well. A couple weeks ago, it was Julio, it was Calvin Ridley, it was Mama Sanu. All these pieces that we thought could make plays, all of a sudden making plays. But when they get shut down, and then they're giving up so many points on defense, that's when you think to yourself, this isn't even a playoff team. And it's crazy because I thought two ways about this team this year. They can make the playoffs, and they can compete with anybody. These guys don't deserve the playoffs. I thought that. And that is the, the wrong thing to think about such a team that's as talented as Last right. three weeks, they've given up 40 so points. Do you, points. They can turn that's, it around? That's what I'm saying. In that, that they division, give up points. that's why I wouldn't pick them. But then even division. with that said, they score points too in bunches. But it's just not consistent. And the teams that that struggle with consistency, I can't find myself to lean on and say, well, just because they're Atlanta Falcons and they've been there the last mm -hmm. couple of years and they know what it's like to have brotherhood and fight, and I, I'm, not, I'm not with all that. Mm -hmm. I, I see everything at, at face value in their too inconsistent. They are just wildly inconsistent. Right okay. Now. I like the Arizona Cardinals. I'll tell you why. They went 0-4, but I talked to people within that organization, and like they were very upbeat going into this week. I don't have locks of the week, but like I felt very confident yeah. that they were going to go on the road and win because Rosen... The rap on Rosen going into the season was he was an arrogant kid, he's kind of aloof, he's kind of pompous. Everyone that I talked to in that building, from the head coach to the general manager. First play from scrimmage. To every teammate that I've had a chance, it says this kid has come in and he has been humble as heck and he demands leadership but does it in a non-verbal way. The players love him and to me that's something I would hang my hat on. Say okay, we started off 0-4, it's still October. This division is going to be the Rams, sure, but we're still a playoff contender here at 1-4. and four. They like their quarterback. They obviously have leaders on offense, and their defense has played well all season. New coach, new quarterback. I'll bang on that and say that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes a little while to get going. But last year, Garoppolo won five straight games on the season. It. Why not a team start going on that run in October as opposed to December? I like the Cardinals. They didn't look pretty. They haven't looked pretty any game. I like saying what type of turnaround? I'm talking that this team could start winning some games. Mm -hmm. Some winning some games. I don't know if they're good. 500. 500 is doable. Yeah. So 136 teams in under this current playoff format uh, have started the season one in four. Okay. Nine have made the playoffs. That is 6.6 percent mm. on that list. Don't Kyle Brandt, do you, you see? No, I'm not answering. Oh, okay. I I'm, thought you. Okay. I, mm -mm. Uh, who do you see that could maybe be a playoff okay. team? Um, or make a dent or turn right. it around. Bring up the list again. Oh, yeah, the list. Yeah, <laughs> the hard. list. I, the I, list. I, I, no, no. Take your pen and I, I know, throw it at the I, screen. I, I got it. I got it. A, Nate's picking out a goldfish shirt before the show. Um, <laughs> you had beef fish. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got priorities. They're koi fish. Uh, koi fish, right. Koi expensive fish, goldfish. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say I'm gonna say New York Giants. Expensive I'm going to say the New York Giants. That's all I'm going to say because, listen, they won the game yesterday. No, they didn't. Uh, yes, they did. No, they didn't. A 63-yard field goal beat them. He pulls it out of his backside out of nowhere. They were. It was the best sign of life we've seen from the Giants all year. Now, listen, I still get seduced by how good the players are. They have uh -huh. fantastic players. And we'll see what the Redskins do tonight. Let me put it that way. The Eagles ain't scaring anybody. Cowboys ain't scaring anybody. If the Eagles, if the Redskins rather put up a brick tonight, it's anybody's division. Right. Anybody's division. And by the way, they beat the Panthers yesterday. I'm 63 yards. Get out of here. <laughs> Odell, you gotta be, you kidding me? 63 yards. I'm gonna take the Giants, Kay. Nobody's taking the Raiders. Not me. I don't, it's gotta be one of these teams that have, I mean, it, it, come, it can come out of nowhere and it can be any of those teams. That's why I refuse to pick one. Remember the Dolphins when Tannehill won like eight of nine years games ago. Years and ago. they started sure. in this position mm -hmm. they were the last team to do it no one mm. saw that coming under Tannehill so yeah. 
I still think that there's plenty of hopes. Look at these, but you see these back pages, by the way, on your Giants? Yeah. Yeah. Headlines? Uh, like a, C minus Like a C, yeah. oh, a C minus. Reach out to us, man. We got puns for days. Season. Come on now. We'll help you with the puns. All right. Yeah. We'll be back Let's after this. Philip Rivers uh, and the Titans. Rookie, 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 mm. rookie. Win, 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 win. Gotta love these week five performances. All coming away with the W, gentlemen. Pretty cool. Very awesome. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the young fellas, the young pups. Lamar Jackson left out. The 90s babies. One more game left tonight to wrap it up. But let's send it over to Will Selva now. He's in the newsroom in Los Angeles with all the latest and greatest. Happy Monday, kiddo. Happy Monday to you, Kay. And not every athlete named Connor had a bad weekend. While well, Pittsburgh awaits news on Le'Veon Bell, will he report? Will he be traded? James Connor holding things down in the backfield for the Steelers. It's a tough spot for him to be in as he's constantly being compared to two Bell. Connor pretty much held in check since week one, but he busted out on Sunday against the Falcons, going for 110 yards and two touchdowns on the ground to go with another 75 yards receiving. It was just what the Steelers running back needed. Our very own Aditi King of Walla caught up with Connor after the game to talk about his performance and what the day meant to him. So when we look at this win, this complete win, how does this match what your expectations are for this team? Um, you know, they were up there, but we still got to get better. We just got to keep stacking these wins now. Uh, got to use this momentum to next week. James, you've probably said 5,000 times you want to be known as a football player, not a cancer survivor. 185 total yards. You are the football player. Yeah. But on a day like today, when there's all the pink towels, the yeah. Pittsburgh is stronger than cancer, are there any extra emotions? Um, you know, it's just the month of October, you know, it's just special. Um, I realize Survivor always be a part of my name. You know, I got the purple laces on, I got the purple on my piece, so it's a part of me, but, you know, I'm trying to make my field on the play. That's what I'm trying to be known for. And this is Connor's second game of 100-plus rushing yards and two-plus rushing touchdowns this season. Le'Veon Bell has had three such games in his career. So Wild. James Conner certainly getting back the groove that he had from week one. And as Kyle mentioned earlier in the show, this is not good for Le'Veon Bell, at least after this performance. Great day for James Conner. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, I still wonder if Le'Veon watches the games. Do we as a table think he sits home and watches the Steelers games? That's a good question. I think probably not. I wouldn't. I want to see somebody do my job, especially do it that well. I don't Could watch when I'm really a guest host. If you really not watch, though, you'd have to watch. I don't know. I, don't, I, I have no clue if he watched tonight. I wish he would tweet. It's funny because... Thanks, Will. We appreciate you. At the beginning of the season, we all thought the Pittsburgh Steelers were waiting on Le'Veon Bell like he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. When J.C. was there the whole time. Oh, wow. Wow. J.C. could easily be their future. Any, any movement on this? We're hearing stuff about Le'Veon Bell potentially yeah, look, back. What's the deal? I, I, I called around this week because I thought maybe there was something. And they're asking for a lot, if anything. It's a second-round pick and a player. Ian Rapport said that last week. And it's kind of the deal where, like, Le'Veon, at this point, you're in week seven, week eight. Your team's kind of established. Do you want a guy who you can't extend, who you have to pay that crazy money for one year, and at this point in the game, you've already got your locker room established. Yeah. Is he the savior for another team? Mm. I don't think at this point he is there either. So he's kind of in this no-win situation. And if the Steelers can get it going with James Conner, Le'Veon shows up week eight, week nine, and then it's like, what? I don't know. It's a very, a very strange predicament, and I'm not sure this was the best decision for Le'Veon. We've got highlights coming up for you. We know you love those, and we also know you love your fantasy football. Mm. Week 5, very happy as they will be well ahead if they pull off the win over the Saints. Appreciate you. Rap sheet. Guys, so many impressive things happened on the field, off the field, in the locker rooms yesterday. Most impressive win, though, Drakes. It's funny, because we're talking about Odell, talking about the Giants. The Panthers just had a heck of a win. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Panthers... This was an incredible win, and I'll tell you something. I spoke with Ron Rivera, and he had an amazing story for me. He said special teams came to him during the offseason and said, hey, we'd like to be, you know, recognized a little bit more. Maybe you can introduce us out of the tunnel one time. They'd never done this, the Panthers. Home game. Oh, wasn't yeah. the offense. wasn't the defense. The special teams before the game oh, comes cool. coming out of the tunnel. That's Love awesome. that. Colin Jones, the special teams captain, had a C on his jersey. So special teams set the tone to start the That's week. Great. Here they are. Game on the line. Everyone thinks they're going to go to overtime or throw a Hail Mary with Cam's big arm. And Chase Blackburn, a former Giants sure. special teams icon, is now the special teams coordinator in Carolina, looks at Ron Rivera and says, Graham could hit it from 65 yards. Graham can do it. Trust Graham. In the same way I loved Sean McVay trusting his offense and going for it on that fourth down, I love Ron Rivera trusting his special teams, putting it on the foot of Graham Gano, who was a Pro Bowl kicker last year, and Graham Gano nailing one from 63 yards away to put that team 3-1 and one going into week six. 
I love the Panthers win yesterday. I know Odell's the big story right now mm -hmm. here in New York. But the confidence he has in all three phases is what I take away from that game. Very impressive victory from the Panthers and very impressive from Ron Rivera, a defensive coach at heart, to say, you know what? Let's go. Let's trust our special teams. And they got the job done. Nate. I love that. Uh, from the perspective of all three phases of football, how about the Bills over the Titans? You know, they didn't put too much pressure on the young quarterback, Josh Allen. Didn't have a huge game. I believe he was 10 for 19. Had the interception. He did rush for this touchdown, as we're seeing right here. LaShawn McCoy stepped up big. Uh, Pass catchers made a few plays for them, but that defense still, they came in and they shut down the offense. Of course, there were some plays that the Titans would love back. I mean, there was that drop by Nick Williams and Mariota is probably still talking to him about. But the simple fact that in a week where the Titans were saying, we need more respect. And you called him out last week and you said, this is what the country thinks about you. Kyle sat there, looked into the camera and said, Titans, you're asking for respect, but this is what everybody thinks about you. And you know what? Kyle was right because of games just like this. Yeah. The moment we start to trust you, the moment we start to say the Titans are for real is the moment you lose to a team that you're supposed to beat. So I don't want to sit there and say the Titans gave that one away. I'm going to say the Bills went out there and earned Nicely a done. tough mm -hmm. victory in the defense, the defense of the Bills. You guys were the anchor. You guys were the anchor to help that young fella get another win under his belt. Just think about this. They beat the Vikings a couple weeks ago. They beat the Titans. With the top teams in this league. Yeah. So shout out to the Bills, man. I see what you guys are doing. Impressive that all four rookie quarterbacks got wins yesterday. Josh Allen among them. For me, it's in the NFC North because Aaron Rodgers is 13-3 and against the Lions going into this game. He runs the show against the Lions. The fact that the Lions could get a win over the Packers, what a way to go into your bye week. So impressive for them. They sacked Rodgers four times. They stripped him twice. It just doesn't happen. And defensively, they've stepped up. I feel like they keep showing us in these moments that they're balanced, that they can do it all. Like Garrett Blunt just did his job, like old Patriot style. He showed up, and he had those two one-yard touchdowns. That's what he does. Carryon Johnson had another great game. Got a little bit banged up, but he he's averaging 5.7 yards a pop, guys, on the season. Kenny Galladay. There he is. We talk about him on the show a little bit. He still does not get enough love here. Four catches for 98 yards and a touchdown. This is a top 15 wide receiver in the National Football League right now. So Lions in a game where track record and everything sort of was against you, you pulled off another big one against another big team and big quarterback. Lions deserve their props. I'll bring it back to New York because we're talking about Odell this and Odell that. There's another football team here, and they wear green, and they actually won a game. Why don't we look here? Here we have, here we owe again, terrible pun, 76-point font, yeah. all the way at the top in this much smaller font. We don't even get a player. Isaiah Crowell has the best rushing game in Jets history and doesn't even get his picture on the newspaper. It's a generic fan shot. And meanwhile, we're saying Baker Mayfield's incredible. Josh Allen, Sam Darnold threw for three touchdowns. They put up 34 points in a win. They won the game. Odell's great. Credit to the Jets. Gang Green, have a day. Nice. Mm. I kind of feel bad for the fan. You just Yeah, whatever his name is, I'd like to see No <laughs> cheese. 30 to 14. Yeah, they really did. They win. Rappaport had me cracking up earlier, okay? Bizarre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chiefs Rams, they are undefeated still. Let's bring in the rap sheet. You're cracking up shrigs. <laughs> <laughs> He's got nothing. Oh. I'm just, I'll, I'll, I'll just okay. say, all, all I'm doing is just uh, trying to understand the role of Little Wayne in the Odell. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's difficult. There's a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have you. We get yeah. it. Let's talk Rams, though. They just get the win. They're undefeated. So are the Chiefs. Uh, and it was in Seattle. They did deal with some injuries as well. You know, Shregs has talked a lot about the depth on this team. What's the latest on Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup? Yeah, the receiver depth is absolutely going to be challenged here. You might hear names like JoJo Natson probably more than the Rams would ever want. That's because Brandon Cooks uh, went out with a concussion and, and certainly took a pretty nasty hit from, from Tedrick Thompson. A really scary hit, and for Brandon Cooks, kind of reminded me of the hit that he took during the Super Bowl. A very, uh, a one that, that really kind of makes you sit up and watch. He's had several concussions, certainly Something to keep an eye on here for the Rams, a pretty electric receiver. And that was not all. Cooper Cup, the trusted target for Jared Goff, also went out with a concussion. And the Rams have talent all over their roster. That much is clear. One of the best teams in the NFL. They just do not have a lot of numbers at the receiver position. And we've seen in the past when players leave with concussions, a lot of times they do miss the next Sunday's game. So, of course, we will be keeping an eye on this one. Ian, that Jags offense didn't do much without Leonard Fournette. It's kind of like cash money without Wheezy. What's the outlook for Jacksonville at the running back position? 
It's not good right now. I'm going to leave the Wheezy line alone because I feel like we've beaten up on, on his role as a hype man probably too much already. As far as the Jacksonville Jaguars, Corey Grant suffered a Liz Frank injury and is going to be out for the season for Jacksonville. Headed for injury reserve. Not sure if he's going to need surgery yet, but if he does, it'll be Dr. Robert Anderson doing it. Now, he's a third down back, not someone who gains a lot of headlines, uh, but he's become a trusted part of the Jacksonville Jaguars backfield and consider that Fournette may very well miss another game with a hamstring injury that just has not quite gotten right. I would not be surprised based on what I know if the Jaguars end up signing at least one running back this week just to bolster their depth and give them an opportunity to run the, run the ball going forward. T.J. Eldon was a thing, of course. He secured eight of his ten targets. He ran a bit, but got to have somebody like Leonard Fournette uh, out there since he's such a huge focal point of that offense. We'll see if they add some help in their run game. We appreciate you. I was going to do another little Wayne reference, but I won't because you asked us so nicely. Will Selva out in the newsroom in L.A. now. Will, what is shaking across the league? What's going on there, Kane? You gave a nice little big Lebowski reference as well. Well done out of you. Uh, no you wheezy, but I, I like big down. Lebowski. I think, I think Lil Absolutely. Wayne and I right away you think know it. big Lebowski. You yeah. know, the two really go together <laughs> sure. like a rug. Take it away. Yeah, I know. Nice, Kane. <laughs> Thank you, Kane. Well, all the talk leading up to the Chiefs and Jaguars game was the matchup between Jalen Ramsey and Tyree Kill. The verbal back and forth was epic, but the, of the Detroit Lions, they beat two of the best quarterbacks in the game. But yet, they're still just two and three. They've got a bye week to sort of figure it out, maybe get some rest, recalibrate, yeah. and keep it yeah. going for the rest of the season. The NFC North is sort of wide open right now. Guys, we had high hopes for both of those matchups this week. So looking at the entire day, which team was the most disappointing? Mm. I'm just going to put it that way. Okay. That's the only way I can say it. All right. The most disappointing team. Um, I would say the Jags. You know, I'm looking at the Jags, and them being in a position where they can send a message and, and come back and prove to everybody that this defense is a Super Bowl defense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the trash talk, everything that they were talking about, uh, Jalen Ramsey coming out, and I know he was just trolling because after the game he gave Tyreek Hill some credit. But this was your moment. And what's scary about this is, and I said it last week, let's not go the opposite direction on this slip, slippery slope, because slippery slope, because all of a sudden you're thinking, is this the old Jags? Not old Jags from a season ago, but a couple seasons ago. Mm. So for me, I don't want this Jag to fall in that familiar place where they're just another team that you beat because offensively they're inept and defensively they're not as good as they say they are. You know, it's funny, Nate's talking about a team that was talking a little bit. Uh, Taylor Lewan is sitting at his locker in a September Sunday yeah. afternoon saying, people don't respect us enough. Yeah. You know, playing the respect card in September. They're three and one. After three and one for the Titans. And we listened. And I think last week on the show, last Monday, we really rallied around the Titans. They beat the Eagles in heroic fashion. They went for it on fourth down. I said Vrabel was coach of the year through four yeah. weeks. And I felt let down by what the Titans did last week. Because I look at what happens. They go into Buffalo. And Buffalo did not have anything going on offense. But the Titans had even less. And it was fumbles. It was drop passes. That Nick Williams pass. You know, hey, look. I wouldn't have picked on the Titans if they didn't ask to be picked on. Mm -hmm. He said, you need to give us national respect. There are 32 markets in this league. You guys don't respect us. Don't respect us. Name who they us. beat. Hey, beat if you guys. want beat respect, you have to take it when you get it in national TV to also take criticism. You guys crapped the bed last night. Mm -hmm. This was horrible. Yeah. You don't lose to the Bills if you're the Tennessee Titans and you want respect. If it was just a loss, it would be one thing. But to come out and verbally say, we don't get respect enough. Yeah, look who and, we beat. And look who we beat. Guys, no, no, it's September, no. You got to do it in October, and you got to do it in November, you got to do it in December. Don't ask for the national attention, because when you get it and don't deliver, you're going to get criticized as well. I thought the Titans couldn't back up their words. I'm surprised you're not a little bit disappointed in the Raiders after talking about Gruden yeah. so much last week and what they did because I was on board with the Raiders after last week. 45 points, putting up the offense, things are clicking, and we're back. We're back at 1-4. and four. We're back to a brutal loss, and I will give credit, of course, to the Chargers. Philip Rivers is playing near perfect football right now. Mm -hmm. He's wheeling, he's dealing, he's got just two interceptions on the season, but the Raiders, they just look flat. They look like they've got nothing going on. Carr had that awful pick in the end zone. Give it to what? Give it to Marshawn. Have we Crazy. learned nothing in the history of the recent NFL? Give it to Marshawn on the goal line. Doesn't do it. Throws the pick to Melvin Ingram. Also had a sack and a, you know nearly a rushing touchdown for Ingram. He had a great game. The Raiders are bottom ten offensively, bottom five defensively. 
I expect more because I love this team, and the NFL is a better place when they're good, so hopefully they can turn it around. No doubt, no doubt. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to go to the state of Florida, and I take this one personally. I'm going to talk about the Miami Dolphins, and I take no joy in doing it, but I bought the timeshare. I did. Here the one. You know, it's as Florida as it gets. You're on vacation. You have a few Mai Tais. You got a little buzz. You walk in. There's a salesman with a Bluetooth headset. Explains to you why this is a great investment. It'll yeah. always and you can. Yeah, we can do it. I bought the three and O timeshare on the Miami Dolphins, and I loved it. We're gonna go all the time. They get their butts kicked by the Patriots, yeah. and then they go up 17 nothing on the Cincinnati Bengals and give up 27 straight points. This thing, I'm upside down on it. I got to reverse double mortgage the whole thing. I got to get out of it. I can't <laughs> double I'm trapped, mortgage. trapped for 50 years in this timeshare. It's on an Airbnb. I want to believe in Adam Gase. I love his cool, icy, badass style. But this was a terrible loss to chase a terrible loss. I want to believe in the timeshare, and I'm in on it still. But this thing is busted. Tough, tough day. Yeah, that's tough, man. Give me a good price. I'll, I'll play the Airbnb. You want in on it? Uh, never mind. I don't <laughs> want to. Trust me. It's here. got a great open floor plan. <laughs> My parents used to make me go to all of those. We, yeah. like, we get like free vacations yeah. and free nights and free donuts. And I'm like, are we really going to sit here and just tell these people no? I'd be so embarrassed. It's tough. The but free donuts. Do that. We'll think about it. We've got to get back we'll, to we'll you. Come we'll back. come back. Thanks for yeah. those, those two free nights at the hotel down the road, though. Appreciate you. That was right. my parents. Come on, guys. All right. Uh, Deanne Sanders caught up with Baker Mayfield sometime after he hung out oh, with Gano nice. uh, yesterday and talked about the Browns. Feeling great right now, honestly. Um, feel good. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things we can work on, though. So that's that's the positive side of it. You know, we get we can make these games not as close. Um, it's just there's just little things each play, each drive that are stopping us. So we just got to settle in and do our job. But uh, a win is a win, no matter how pretty it is. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be myself every day. I think, I truly believe that's why they drafted me uh, for, for more than just on the field. The, the leadership, the attitude off the field, you know, the, a worker's mentality is what we need to have. We need to show up every day. And, you know, it's a great win for us. We're going to enjoy it right now. But then we have to hit the reset button and go back to work. Hey, man, I'm proud of you, man. You balls, you got the call, man. Keep up the good work. Appreciate it. And Thank keep you, on Dan. dancing, man. I love it. I love it. Mm. Guys, we've seen a lot of incredible things from rookies. It is only week five. So if you had to pick the rookie of the year this morning on this show, Nate, who are you going with? And this is a little bit of a hot take because the record doesn't necessarily reflect um, a, a rookie of the year, and nor does the stats. But I will say Baker Mayfield uh, okay. because I, I'm looking into the future. I'm trying to spin this forward because this isn't the rookie through four quarters, uh, four, four games of the season. You're saying the rookie for the entire season. And I feel like by the time it's all said and done, the Browns will be a game above 500, okay. mm -hmm. and this will be one of the biggest turnarounds we've seen in NFL history, and the man that is anchoring this team is Baker Mayfield. They've it's won more games already than they've won the past two seasons combined. No question, okay? And it, quite frankly, there could be an argument made that could, they could be undefeated if Baker Mayfield was a starter from week one. As much as I, I love Tyrod Taylor, as much yeah. as I say that Tyrod earned the job, it's just one of those unfortunate situations for him. He gets banged up, and the guy that was ready to take the mm -hmm. spot is ready to take the keys to the organization. He's driving these guys in the right direction. So I feel like for what the future holds for the Browns, and at the end of the season, we're going to be looking back and saying, damn, Baker said he wanted to go to the Browns. Yeah. He wanted to change the culture, and he did it. And he did it with some help on defense. Now, let's heat this thing up. I think they have the defensive rookie of the year, too. Denzel mm. Ward. We were there. Fort Worth, Texas. They take Baker, number one. Everyone said, that's a little nuts. Okay. Yeah. Number four pick, I'm going to take Boo! Chubb, Quinn Nelson. Boo! Denzel Ward, the shocking pick. All he does is rip turnovers, rip fumbles, cause interceptions. Cause This is a huge red zone pick. And, guys, later in the game, he blocked a kick. He said Hugh Jackson challenged him during the week. He was very good at doing it at Ohio State. Hugh Jackson said, I want to see you block a kick. And Denzel Ward said, Coach, I got you this week. Sure enough, he goes out and blocks one. I think he's a runaway, in my opinion, defensive rookie year, Denzel Ward. So you're going to do a Saints thing like last year. Could be yeah, two years in a row. We yeah. did that last Both team, year. you're right. I'll go with Saquon Barkley. I'm going to go with the running back. He's averaging 116 yards a game. That is a lot more than the next running back rookie. He's got five touchdowns, second as far as rookies are concerned, only to Calvin Ridley. And it's really what he's doing, making something out of of nothing behind this offensive line. You're talking about records. Well, listen, Odell won Rookie of the Year when they were 6-10. and 10. Cam won it when they were 6-10. and 10. And Todd Gurley was Rookie of the Year, and the Rams were 7-9. and nine. Saquon's doing all that he can, scoring touchdowns, making plays, and bringing excitement to an offense that, frankly, hasn't had much until Week 5. Yeah, Saquon's been awesome. I'm going to go back to the defensive side of the ball, and although Denzel Ward's gotten a lot of love and a lot of headlines and has deserved it, 
Derwin James is the least appreciated Come rookie on. of any of these, all these guys. He's having what might be an all-pro season as a safety for the Los Angeles Chargers. This was him two weeks ago swatting a pass. He had five more tackles yesterday. He patrols the middle of the field. And I'll go this, this even step further. In an era where safeties are being phased out of sure, the man. game, in an era where you cannot be a, a thumper like Steve Atwater or John Lynch used to be, Derwin James has found a way to still be a valuable player and maybe the best defensive player on that, on that Chargers defense. Yeah. on a defense loaded with stars. So yeah. I'm going to say Derwin James, when it's all said and done, will not only be Defensive Rookie of the Year, but will be an All-Pro. Oh, I think right. he's that talented. We can sit here and disagree too. all day long on who should be Rookie of the Year. One thing we all agree on is something that affects all of us. The cancer